The Oklahoma Sooners got a big series win over BYU. Kirsten Deal throws a no-hitter. Alex Tarako joins the show to break it all down on today's episode of Locked On Sooners. You are Locked On Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Sooner Nation? Welcome to Locked On Sooners. It's the Alex Starocco Show here on Locked On Sooners, and today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. I'm John Williams. He's Josh Helmer, and our expert softball analyst is Alex Starocco. Alex, it was a an entertaining weekend of softball again in Norman with the BYU Cougars coming to town. It was a big series for Oklahoma coming off of the Texas series a week ago, but let's just jump in with the, the broad picture, the big picture takeaways from the series. How important was it for Oklahoma to, to get the two out of three from the BYU Cougars, even though BYU is bottom of the standings, just getting back on, on the right track. Yeah, I think that was huge. And, and even when it came down to the rubber match on Saturday, um, it was honestly essential for, um, Oh, you to take that last game and and really you know get the series win. So um, I was excited to see a lot of that fight that kind of showed out of the Sooners this weekend, um, and it kind of carried over to you know the game against Tulsa too, and just kind of livening up and really kind of getting gritty within at bats. And I felt like when they got behind, that's kind of what they lost within you know the Texas series as well as that loss on Friday against BYU. Well, obviously, we'll talk about the the middle game at some point, but what were the positives from the BYU series? It seems like everybody's hung up on the one that did not go according to plan, but from, from your vantage point, what went right? Yeah, I just think, you know, there was some clicking that tended to happen. Um, I love to see just kind of that um, – motivation factor there was some sort of fight in a different way than maybe we're used to so like I said just like fat feistiness within at bats in itself um I was also pumped to see just kind of that enthusiasm that I feel like was just kind of lacking within past series um was, was excited about that um as well as just kind of like figuring it out and like letting the game play and not pressing I feel like when they get in those holes um the Sooners have kind of started pressing and that's kind of super uncharacteristic of what we've seen in the past couple of years. So um, I was excited to see just kind of that fight enthusiasm and being able to really grind it through. I thought Kelly Maxwell just absolutely was phenomenal um, for the weekend um, and being able to just really grind through the heat and, you know, everything that kind of happened. Um, love to see, you know, Kinsey Hansen consistently back in the lineup again um, and knowing that she's trucking through um, after her injury the last couple of weeks. Um, I know Texas was her first series back, but just kind of like, getting her comfortable back behind there um, too has been really nice to see. And then obviously Kirsten deal um, tonight with the, the no hitter against Tulsa Um, love to see that out of Kirsten so that it's, you know, not just a ton of pressure on Kelly Maxwell um, and being able to, you know, kind of had that, have that, you know, back and forth in addition into the, you know, pitching circle for the Sooners. So Oklahoma opened the BYU series with you know, a run rule win, eight to nothing. You know, Kelly Maxwell, she was awesome. Again, she's become that ace that everybody expected her to be. You know, non-conference play was kind of up and down for her, but she has really, really settled in during Big 12 play. How is it that she's been able to be so good? You know, what is it that's made her game so good now that we're getting to the final stretch of the season? Yeah, I think a big part of it is finding that role within the difference of non-conference games and in conference games. And when you have that different schedule of not five games a weekend and three, you can have a little bit more control of, you know, what, what game you're starting, if you're closing. Honestly, when, when Kelly kind of falls behind and she has, you know, those kind of mistakes in pitches or runs that she gives up, it's in kind of those later innings or in a closer role. And I um, um, just kind of reviewing stats and games 
wins over the season thus far. That's where she has those, you know, that earn run average kind of goes up in her stats is when she's in later in the game or um, in a closing role. I feel like Kelly Maxwell and herself is truly a starter when it comes to pitching. Um, and it's kind of rare to sometimes see that in softball. I know obviously baseball is different, but um when you kind of fit that mold, you just kind of fit it. And that's when you're going to thrive is when you're comfortable. Um, I see that um, not only just on the pitching side, but I mean, look at Jada Coleman when she was moving around the lineup to get comfortable and then she's back right at the top um, and she's thriving. So um, that's a little bit kind of, of that, you know, uh, symmetry within the team. Um, Kelly just thrives in that, you know, opening the gate and just shutting teams down from the jump. Um, and so I've loved seeing her dominate in a lot of different ways. She's spinning the ball really well. She's moving um, on all kinds of the quadrants of the strike zone and being able to mix speeds. I think that's so huge within this pitching staff. Um, and I feel like she uses her off speed and her change up so effectively and, and able to kind of tunnel within all of her pitches. I feel like she's one of the few that really has a really big you know, carousel of pitches. And so that's exciting. And I think that also just adds to her success when it comes to, you know, multiple appearances within a weekend and th things of that nature. Not that it's all going to fall at the feet of Kelly Maxwell. It, it won't. And for Oklahoma to be the type of success where they want to be, probably it can't, right? You, you need serious contributions from Nicole May, what you saw from Kirsten Deal versus Tulsa. But having said that, probably we're at the point to where we – have the strong indication that Kelly Maxwell is going to do a heavy bit of lifting for Oklahoma. How beneficial is it for her and for OU that she's kind of, I mean, before Oklahoma, she's had that role before. Yeah, I mean, to her, it's really no different. Um, I think it's able to kind of settle that lineup in a way um, and just kind of that security of like, hey, I got you. I'm going to hold it down. Um and so I think that gives that um, to the lineup in the offense. Um, but also I think as offense is something to get used to as well. I mean, we've had a, a, a couple of aces every year um, and not saying that we don't this year. It's just Kelly is just kind of outshining a little bit more um, and has a little bit less mistakes. And so when you have that, I think that just kind of gives some comfort. Um, and I think Kelly is like, hey, guys, I've done it. Let's keep doing it and let's keep running the table. So do you think that they're going to kind of settle into a, hey, Friday it's Kelly, Sunday it's Kelly, part of the rotation as we gear up for the final three series of the regular season? I mean, I wouldn't doubt it, but also, too, I don't see, you know, Coach Rocha and Coach Gasso completely losing faith in the rest of the pitching staff. Um, you also don't want to get too predictable, and I think it also depends on, you know, how games go earlier in the series, whether that's, you know, we come out on top or if there's a middle ground loss, then, yeah, they're going to go back to their ace, their comfort, their the Kelly Maxwell within uh, the pitching rotation just to add that little bit of security of like, okay, we have Kelly in the circle. We're going to do everything that we can do. Um, I love what I'm seeing out of Kirsten Deal. Um, I don't really think that she's rattled too much um, in the long run for her, her middle of the season kind of stunt. And so – I'm excited to see that there's more than just Kelly. There's there's um, more than that. I, I have not lost faith in Nicole May. I think she's a great, great pitcher. Um, and I, I just want to see her use her strengths a little bit more. I feel like she's really kind of going into that curveball, drop ball. And I feel like when I threw with Nicole May in the last year, it's her strengths are her rise ball and her curveball and her off speed. So if she dives into that, if, if they're able to kind of shift those gears back to, you know, those pitches when she was successful, I think that can also change her game a lot more too. Nicole May's kind of uh, seen it all in uh, college softball. So I think that's going to benefit her. Let's talk about that on the other side, the, the ebbs and flows of a career. Nicole May's been there and done that. We'll talk about it next on Locked On Sooners. 
We've all been there, either as a player or a fan. It's halftime and the scoreboard is not looking good. You're feeling low, not sure you or your team can pull out a win. That's when you dig deep, lift your head up and say to yourself, time to get back in the game, pull off some bank heists and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. That's right, the smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go lets you compete with your friends to get the most riches and the biggest empire. It's the Monopoly you love, but on your phone, anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much to do. Play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards. Make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball. Change other players' rent for your iconic property. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests and in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there, put on your game face, and download Monopoly to go. Now free on the App Store or Google Play Store. On that, we'll talk about it next on Locked On Sooners. So Nicole May has uh, maybe been the unfair recipient of a little bit of flack from the fan base because when things don't go according to plan, somebody has to uh, somebody has to bear a little bit of the, the brunt of the responsibility. But one thing I think that's a positive for Oklahoma is Nicole May, to me, has sort of seen every situation that college softball can present, the highs, the lows. How uh, helpful is that for her moving forward? Absolutely. I think, you know, she has truly earned that veteran status. I mean, she's going to go down as one of the most winningest pitchers in NCAA history. And, and I think that's, you know, such an accomplishment, such an honor. And she's done it with such grace in the fact of, you know, she's had so many, you know, role players in the pitching staff with her in her four years at OU. And so for her to just kind of grind through those years and in her outings, I think means so much. Um, I know in my time at OU, I look to her for a lot of assistance, whether of just like, okay, what do we do now at practice? You know, can you help me with some film? It was things that, like that. And so when she's been able to kind of grow in that nature, um, she's such a good leader and she doesn't even know it. Um, I know I've probably mentioned it that before on here um but also too i think we as sooners sooner fans got really spoiled with her numbers last year her last year numbers when i i was breaking it down because i was like something is just like it was just off or something like i needed an explanation and so when i dove into that her numbers last year just outstood everything that she's had in her career um and so when you pile those kinds of numbers next to you know jordy ball and and, and myself last year it just it just like emphasizes how well she performed last year. And so I feel like Sooner fans got spoiled with that and her results last year. And so they compare everything. But truthfully, her numbers are not far off of what she had her freshman and sophomore year either. So, I mean, this is like more of a consistent Nicole May of what she's done. I think last year she was just so good with it. Um, that's why I really kind of want to see her dive into those other pitchers pitches that she's had success with um, in the past, um, just because I feel like she's not a down ball pitcher. And so I want to see her kind of move into those strengths that she does have. I think you hit the nail on the head there about the 2023 season, just creating these kind of unfair and unrealistic expectations across the board, because you and Jordy and Nicole were phenomenal last year in the, the 61 and one run and Kirsten deal was great as well in her role in the rotation, but it's a new year and it's a whole new you know, set of circumstances and everything is different and you can't base what you're seeing on last year's production. Uh, Nicole, like you've, like everybody's mentioned is, has been around. She's seen it all. She's done it all. She's, you know, pitched behind, you know, Giselle, you know, Juarez and Hope Troutwine and, and Jordy and yourself and, and is a veteran on the staff. And so when you do get to the Oklahoma state series here in a couple weekends, even UCF, uh, when you get down to Orlando, that's going to be a big series, uh, the postseason. she's not going to be rattled by any, any circumstance because she's been in every big game that Oklahoma's played in over the last four years. How can that help translate to somebody like Kirsten deal? You know, she's just in her second season with the Sooners. She's coming along. She's coming on strong and have having really, really good performances here and there. What can a veteran like Nicole May help to impart upon those young pitchers as they continue to develop? Yeah, I think a big thing, too, is just making those younger pitchers aware of, you know, um, 
kind of that experience that you'd get from going through those types of, you know, weird situations within a game or um, an account and everything. So when your bullpen is close, it, it works magic in the fact of you don't have to go through those situations individually to learn from them. You're able to learn from them as a whole because you're able to share and and think of different solutions within, you know, different problems. And I think that's super important. Um, I know I feel like half the time too, we we talked through a lot of things um, uh, and we got really close last year. Obviously, I don't know the pitching staff kind of vibe this year as much and as well. Um, but I do know that within, you know, Katie and SJ, um, those two specifically, um, they were such sponges in their first year that I can't imagine that goes away in their second year. Um, and I think they are honestly ahead of the curve in the fact of, you know, they're starting their career at an, in, a, in a space that's so unknown with the success of Oklahoma softball, um, whereas they're not going through those, you know, early – problems quote unquote or situations that maybe Nicole may or or Jordy or myself um I kind of arrived to within our careers so when you're you have veterans like you know Carly Kelly Nicole able to pass on things like that to your younger parts of your staff I think that only grows the future for um those younger pitchers ultimately Alex this team will by the fan base be judged by okay do they go win a big 12 championship do they get back to the women's college world series and do they win another national championship and the journey along the way? Well, is the journey along the way. And if it gets you to the finish line of a national championship, then the, the, you know, ends justify the means, so to speak, where is this team at? Right? Because the program has such a lofty standard right now to where, look, uh, I kind of, th this is just my opinion. I chalk up the Texas series as you got beat twice by a team that pitched really well and is one of the best teams in America. The BYU game I chalk up to Oklahoma for the first time in a very long time kind of had a junk game across the board, and they got beat. Where do you stand with where Oklahoma's at right now? I feel like there's a lot of lessons that has come out of this season, whether that was for this team as a whole, whether it was for a group of veterans that have never faced adversity like this before. Um, so I think this year right now has involved just a lot of lessons and learning um, to a group that thought that they knew everything. And so when you're able to kind of mold that kind of thought process into these losses. It's not losses, it's learning. Um, it's only going to gear them for the third part of the season that's the most important. Um, and that's where I kind of stem into it of you're not – like we want to be playing well in June and, and end of May, not, you know, February and all that stuff. I know it's middle of the conference and, and, and Big 12 conferences are, are super important and everything and those kinds of championships. But in the grand scheme of things, like you want to be playing well at the end of the season. And I feel like these kind of challenges are going to gear this team up for the end of the season, just because of how chaotic this softball se season has been, not only for OU, but just across the board. Um, I mean, Thursdays and Fridays slates were just insane within <laughs> everything in softball. Um, this weekend and last weekend, I feel like the last like seven, eight days has just been wild. So um, I think that's just kind of the name of the game right now is the fact of you want this team to gel differently than maybe you're used to from past teams and past successes. And I think that's a big part of it. And when I saw fans and people kind of like go into this meltdown of like, what is happening to OU? I was like, what is happening? And like, what's the reason? And so when I dove into numbers between like offense and defense, I mean, we're still um, this was like after the BYU series, so not including tonight, obviously, but we're still number one in batting average in the country. We're number three in home runs per game still. We're number one on on-base percentage. We're number two in scoring, and we're number two in slugging in the in the country offensively. And everyone's having a meltdown of like, this is the worst offense we've had. Like, what's going on? And it's like, it's just frustrating because 
the numbers are still there. It's just that's how softball is right now is it's so competitive. And it's there's a lot of learning across the boards. I feel like the last two years, there's been a huge graduation of a lot of veterans. And so when you have just college softball slate kind of all over the place, it, there's still success when it comes to Oklahoma Sooners. They haven't fallen off. It's just a different type of game than than a lot of fans are used to seeing out of the Sooners. Um, so that was huge. I mean, even our pitching, we're still number four in the country in ERA. Um, we're number one in shutouts tied with a couple of teams. And it's there's just a lot of things that I'm like, I'm not really seeing why we're complaining right now. Like we're still top in a lot of categories within a team and everything. So I just want to reassure fans that, you know, the sun will come up tomorrow, even if we do have more losses in the column than maybe we're used to. And it could be worse. We could have lost a series to Iowa state, <clears throat> Oklahoma state Cowgirls. So, you know, things could be melting down a little bit further. Now I will say Lexi Kilfoyle, she pitched great again, for the Cowgirls, which is going to set up a fantastic uh, series towards the end of the year that will have big time Big 12 title implications, especially if everybody stays within two games of the standings as they are right now between Oklahoma in first, Texas in second, and Oklahoma State in third. We're going to get into Kirsten Deal's no hitter because that's big, big, big time for her in uh, against Tulsa and what it could potentially mean for the rest of the season. And then I've got a question for Alex just on the pitching front that she doesn't know is coming, but it's going to be a, a nice little surprise. But hopefully the, the listeners and followers here will enjoy that as well. Coming up next on Locked On Sooners. Let's get straight to the point. You want to grow your portfolio to deal with the rising cost of inflation to pay off your debt or your mortgage, pretty much anything standing in the way of you and financial freedom, right? With Yahoo Finance, you can get access to the news, data, and the tools that you need in order to help reach that financial freedom. They are the number one finance destination, providing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspective, analyst ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. So for comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com, the number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. That's yahoofinance.com. So Kirsten Deal throws the no-hitter against Tulsa, only allows two base runners, and they're in the weird fashion, a hit-by-pitch and a catcher's interference on an 0-2 count. Otherwise, she was phenomenal. Tulsa couldn't touch her. Absolutely. Um, I was super pumped for, you know, Kirsten. I was super pumped for Kirsten. She was um, just absolutely lights out. Um, like you said, it was weird instances, hit by pitch and the catcher's interference, which you probably see once in a blue moon. Um, and I just thought Kinsey's body language was so funny after it happened. She just kind of stood up with hands on her hips and I'm like something weird definitely happened. But Kirsten, I think, did so well of just being able to take advantage of the strike zone tonight um, and being able to manipulate it and and in fantastic fashion of just, I mean, no hits obviously, but I think the biggest one when I was looking at the stat board and just watching, she didn't allow a walk tonight. And I think that's huge. Um, especially I feel like this staff this year has maybe given up a little bit more walks than, uh, the OU pitching staffs have prior. And so I was really pumped to see that, that number, um, alongside a no hitter, um, and just seeing that excitement out of her and that kind of accomplishment in college, because it's so, so special. Um, and it doesn't happen quite often in the grand scheme of it, even though maybe sooner fans might see it a little bit more frequently. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, I, I think if Plank's statistical data was correct, it was the 72nd in program history, and it, it joined uh, a, a no-no that Kelly Maxwell had earlier this season, so to this season, but that is abnormal. That does not happen a lot of places. H how special is it just individually for Kirsten to go do that? Absolutely. I mean, she's, pl like, 
honestly, I think she's pitched great this this season, and she's spinning the ball well. She has great movement on her pitches, and she's slowly building that confidence, and I think that just really has jump-started her for the rest of the season. Um, and so when you see that kind of confidence grow and grow and grow, um, I love to see that. I love when she has that attitude on, on the mound, and so when she has that kind of, you know, just walk to her and presence about her, I think that just only makes her even better um, because as a pitcher, you need that mentality and you need that kind of just swag when it comes to um, the mound. So I was I was so excited for her um, and excited to see, you know, what she does next and coming off of success like this. It's going to be important because, like you mentioned earlier, Oklahoma is going to rely on their entire pitching staff for, through the rest of the season. And Kirsten Deal is going to be a big part of that. Now leads the team in ERA at 1.16. She's 9-1 and one on the season and has really pitched well in her last five outings. That BYU game, she allowed a couple runs. But prior to that, she hadn't allowed any runs in like four or five outings before that. So mm-hmm. it's really on a nice run for the sophomore uh you know, Kirsten deal. So the pitching question that I have for you, Alex, and this is one that is more just like, if you were to be standing in front of a group of girls that are hoping to be aspiring college pitchers, tell them something that you wish you would have known, or is going to be important for them to have success and get noticed and, and find their way onto a college campus one day. Gosh, I feel like I could go on a huge spiel about this. Um, just because pitching is so hard. Um, if, if it was easy, everyone would do it. And that's why pitching, everyone does when you're eight, nine years old, and then everyone kind of quits. And then you you have your, your, your one, you know, outlier and everything. But, you know, one thing I've always said, you got to have to be kind of like a little crazy to be a pitcher in, in the end. Um, just to withstand, you know, that kind of, you know, concentration, that focus, that pressure, um, uh, I loved kind of playing with, you know, a chip on my shoulder and having something to prove to whoever, um, but also being able to find a competition within a competition in the game. Um, I, I love that aspect. I think for me, um, too, when it comes to like just tips about pitching, like I, I rely a ton on my spin, um, and spin is so important when it comes to just the small details of the game softball, I've grown up knowing of like, it's a game of inches. Um, and so when it comes to spin, that's where you get kind of that, that inch factor when it comes to, you know, the difference between, you know, jamming a hitter or just apps a hitter, just barreling something up and putting it a really long ways off of you. Um, and so when you combine all of that and just that kind of like bulldog mentality and the ability to like fight and grind, but also in the same moment, being able to forget, you know, the last pitch, whether it was good or bad um, and kind of build off of it, no matter what, I feel like that's where that, you know, game within a game comes from. Um, I love thinking about the Ted, La- Ted Lasso, you know, goldfish mentality of, you know, one second memory. Um, and when you combine all of that, I think that's huge. Um, for me, a really big step too was kind of growing in that mentality of understanding, you know, you need to kind of slow it down at times. Like for me, I always got super fast when I got like a really intense game. So being able to slow down, find your rhythm and your routine. Um, another big thing too for me was, you know, taking a deep breath. I sometimes get get into like a cardio pitching mode. Um, And so when you take a deep breath, I know hitters do this too in between pitches, whether that's you find a focal point of, you know, you um, take a breath and look at the foul pole. Um, For me, it was, you know, signaling outs to my, you know, catcher and center fielder, um, finding little parts of a routine to help you kind of get in that rhythm and routine and, and make sure, you know, if everything else around you is stable, then you can be stable as well. And so when you build off of that and have a good foundation, you're able to keep growing. That's awesome. Really cool insight. And uh, hopefully some, well, young, young girls and boys, I I think probably uh, softball or baseball players could, could take something out of that for sure and, and use it and apply it. One final Tulsa question for you on the offensive end of the equation. Alyssa Brito came in and was, uh, you know, red hot with a bat with the way that she closed the BYU series, but just collectively for Oklahoma to close the game the way that they did 
plate the five runs in the sixth. Offensively, how important was that for this group? I mean, so important. I think um, <clears throat> I think it showed a lot too of like the offense saying to KD, like, "Hey, we have your back." In a, in a special moment for her, um, as well as being able to kind of capitalize on a performance that you know against Wichita State, they got to seven and then they had to play out the full seven. And, and Coach Gasso wasn't too happy about that. And so when you're able to kind of take advantage of, you know, just a midweek like that and kind of just pour it on, I think that's huge. Um, I love the explosiveness. Um, I think Sid Sanders, the, her numbers, you don't think it's there. But then you look at her on-base percentage. I mean, it's insane. And then her walk numbers, and so she's producing in a lot of ways, and then she comes out – with a ball that's just, you know, obviously ends the game in that in that way um, and just adds all of those runs. She has so much power, so much poise. And so I love when there's moments like that. I love that they were able to collectively get those walks in. OU's known for them for their walks. I feel like lately they haven't been able to kind of get them around the base pass. And tonight I really felt that out of them. Um, they only had four left on base. Um, I feel like in the past couple of games, it's been kind of double digits. Um, that's always a number I, I really look into when it comes to kind of that win loss factor to OU. When they have a higher number of left on base, that's when they're not getting things done. Um, so I was excited to see that it was a low number of left on base um, as well as just getting it done and in a productive fashion, they were able to string along hit. And so I think that's huge moving forward and, and you know, gaining that, you know, traction um, heading into Houston and, and after that. The Oklahoma Sooners will have an opportunity to continue their hot run against the Houston Cougars team that is allowing over eight runs per uh, seven innings in Big 12 play and not hitting super great either. So this is a big time opportunity for Oklahoma to continue to get right as they play towards June and getting really being right in the most important time of the season. Hey, it's always great getting insight from Alex Duraco. Make sure you go follow her on Twitter at Alex Duraco. Also go check out her merch store, alexduraco.com. Follow Josh on Twitter at Josh on Ref, myself at John Nine Williams. The show is at Locked On Sooners, but until next time, he's Josh. She's Alex. I'm John Boomer. Sooner.